saith the Most High. Read. Now, who is you talking to? Let's go. Read. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. So he said, Dwell, uh, uh, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. All right? Now, some cats are trying to make daughter of Babylon and Babylon two different places. It's the same place. Okay? Each is, is, is how it was written by the prophets. As a matter of fact, when, it's, when you go into the Hebrew, it's, it doesn't say daughter. It says fair Babylon. Okay? Those who know Hebrew know this. Okay? Let's keep going. Let's go to Joel 4 and 6. Now, wow, how was that done? How has that been done? How has the Father, he's been asking us, he has woken up. Remember, we read earlier in the beginning of this lesson, you know, so he will, he will wake us up, and, you know, he will bind us, and, and he, would, he would, you know, all this. But we, we, I'm going to show you that he laid that spirit on us to remove ourselves from that place. Okay? Now, and then there's other, it was other brothers teaching that, but they're teaching at the during that time to go was during the uh, uh, the abomination of desolation. Now understanding that has happened already. And again, I'm going to send a priest. So Joel four and six. Read that. And you have sold of the sons of of sons Judah to the people sons of Jerusalem. Oh, wait, and the people sons of Jerusalem. Right. And sell and sell into slavery to the. Grecians. Right. Ionians or Ionians. Grecians. Keep going, read. So that ye may have removed them far away from their homeland. Now we know that we went far away, that the Grecians and the Romans took us away. Okay. Keep going, read. Behold, I will wake up them that leave. Well, now, now in the Hebrew, I got a quote, I got a quote. You can read, you can just, uh, uh, uh. Read right. out the quotation, yeah. Because I now when you get this package, you're going to see the quotation, and the quotation is actually the Hebrew, and it says this as well. But keep going, read it. And I will rouse them to leave, which is the part, uh huh, the place you have sold them to, and I will pay you back. So he says, I will rouse them up to leave the place you have sold them to. He will rouse them to leave. If I rouse somebody. You know what? You know whether it's with anger. If I say I start messing with him and he get mad somehow, or if I persuade him, saying, "Listen, he don't want to go somewhere." If I say, "Listen, we need to go here," and I say, "Come on, man," I, you know, it's gonna be some girls there, whatever we want to do, whatever it is. I have to arouse him up to speak and say, "You know what? Let's go." Okay. So I'm showing you that in Zion, he has, or he put that spirit on us to rouse us up to leave. I'm going to put more on that. This is talking to Southern Zion. I'm going to show you that those who left are a portion. Those who did not leave, whether well, people get mad at me at saying this, I'm going to prove it. Those who did not leave, they're going to have to go through something. The same, well, going, we all going to go through something, but they're going to go through what is being done we've seen in Babylon according to what we just read. All right? That's only common sense. Because if you're not there during these times what happened in Babylon, what we just read, then you then you you're not there to go through that. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. Let's go. Jeremiah uh sixteen and fourteen. Therefore behold the days come, saith the most high, that it shall no more be said, The most high liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Read. But the Most High Lord <coughs> that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Okay. And from all the lands where he have driven them. And I will bring them again into the land that I gave unto their fathers. Now he's speaking in general. This is general. But now he's about to get very tedious. He's going to show you exactly how he's going to do it. Pacific. Okay. He went from general. But he's going to show you how he's going to do it. I'm going to drop. I'm going to go over to uh, uh, Brother Marco's house. But I'm about to get over there and get in my car and drive. That's specific how I'm going to do this. Read how he's going to do it. Behold, I will send for many fishers. I will do what? I will send for many fishers, saith the Most High. Uh huh. And they shall fish them out. Mean fish means to haul them. This is in the Hebrew. We went and got this and pulled this from the Hebrew. 
just like we did Joel 4 and 6. Okay? Kigor, so that's why I may look different in your books. We go, Kigor. And after will I send for many hunters. And do what? And I will send for many hunters. Uh huh. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rock. He's talking about Israel and the Gentiles nations. But I'm going to show you that he's talking about uh, Israel. Before I go there, I'm going to show you that he says these fishermen, he's going to send for fishermen and he shall fish and they shall haul them out. And to haul something means I got to pick it up and pull it out. Now I'm going to show you these are men. This is not angels at this point. These are men. These are human beings. These are the brothers who are waking up and becoming elders or whatever you want to call them in, in, uh, of the congregation or brothers. They don't have to be elders, but someone who is teaching. Listen, we have to leave this place before all these things take place in, the, in, this, in, this, in, this, in this place. Now we're talking about a Pacific place here. We're talking about Babylon. We're talking about removal of Zion. Okay? And I can show you that it's not only going to be the southern tribe, it's going to be northern pieces of them. But the prophecy, you got to understand, you can't use scriptures for other things that are not meant for other tribes. you got to use them for what it, they're actually saying. This scripture talks about Zion, the removal of the southern kingdom. Read, go, let's go to uh, 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 Mark 1 and 16 and show who these fishes are. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, mm -hmm. for they were fishers. And should I use? Yeah, Yeshaya. And Yeshaya said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. See that? So we know that they're men. You see that? That's the precept to that. Make sense? Uh, yeah. All right, now, I just want to go here real quick. Go to, uh, the destruction. Yeah, yeah Psalms. I was going to go to Enoch, but I'm not even going to go there. Enoch. It, I mean, Ezekiel. If you want to understand that the mark, some don't believe that the Father would do this. But all, my, uh, all those who are following this teaching, Christians, there's a mark that you, have, that you would get. And the mark it depends on the law. All right, if you want to go through, read Ezekiel 9, we're not even going to go through it. Okay, Ezekiel 9, 4 through, uh, I think it's uh, 12. Or 4 to the end, let's read it. Ezekiel 9, uh, start at verse 4. Let's go to Psalm. Now, we're going to start going to Psalm 91. To show you that those who remove themselves, okay, remember there's a physical, there's a, there's a spiritual belief, there's a physical removal, then there's the works of the Father. When he says, um, uh, when he says, uh, 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 be as pilgrims upon the earth, that means to move during these days. He needs you to live by faith. All of us, myself, and we all sometimes have, there's a lack of faith in every man. Or there's a doubt, how do you want to call it? But we must be strong in the faith. That's why we must pray for each other. We must, you know, uh, just show each other. You know, the scripture tells your brother they sin so they can know what to pray for. Alright? But be wise doing that because some people will pray for your downfall. Alright? And uh, let, let, let's go. Psalms 91. Let's get it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right? Read. Meaning that you're going to be safe. Keep going. Read. I will say... I will say of the Most High, He is my refuge and my fortress, my power, in Him I will rest. Now the secret place is the wilderness. Keep going, read. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. There's some birds again. Remember, we talked about those who have died is, 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 is being fed to the birds, and then their spirit is taken by these angels into the depths of hell with chains. Okay, keep going. You remember we read that, right? Yeah. Keep going, read. And from the noisome pestilence. Read. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Those are the angels that he's going to bring upon us. So there is a gathering with angels. I'm going to prove that. Keep going. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. See that the arrow he's talking about the rays, the the the, the uh, 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 that we was talking about that's going to be happening during these times with the other angels, the fallen angels. Okay, keep going. But hold on, these are the ones who kept the faith. These are the ones who, who were faithful and, and listened to the precepts of the Father. And all of them, and, and understood, not everything, but they understood, knowing that they had to make a move. Keep going, read. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Read. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Then it shall come near you. Keep going. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You see that? Very, very simple. Alright, let's keep going. Let's go to Matthew 24 and 13. Read. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. Those, the, those are the ones that did not die during the perilous time. Those are the ones who saved themselves. These are the ones who uh, uh, that the, that that was targeted, okay, by by the fallen angels, by mankind, by everyone to be destroyed. These are the ones whose houses were ravished. These are the ones who were in fear for their lives. This is the destruction. These are the pilgrims. Let's keep going. Read Second Ezra 13 and 24. Let's go back now. This is the breakdown of Second Ezra 13 and 24. Read. Now this therefore therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. We just read that before in, the, in Psalms 91 about that. Keep going, read. The same is he whom God the highest have kept a great season. Meaning that that great season during all those troubles, he kept you safe. <laughs> you watched them die a thousand over here. A thousand, although you was afraid and, and scary and shook, you, 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 he kept you. Keep going, read which by his own self shall deliver his creatures, and he shall order them that are left behind. Keep going. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm. Keep going. And that he held neither sword nor an instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. This is what? This is the interpretation. This is the interpretation. Now he's got an understanding of the interpretation. What we just went through, that's the interpretation. Keep going. Okay. Where you at? Where you at? Uh, where you at? Psalms. Let's go to right. Psalms 97 and 3. This is to get a piggyback on more of what we just said. Psalms 97 and 3. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. Read. His lightnings enlightened the world, and the earth saw and trembled. Now, I'm going to show you where his lightning is. His lightning cometh before him. His lightnings are the angels. I'm going to prove that. Alright? Well, let's keep going. Uh, verse, go back to uh, 2nd Ezra 13, 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Now he's going to start to deliver those who are upon the earth. Now let's find out how he's going to do it. Because we just read that the lightning, the lightning, the lightning. We're going to find out what this lightning is. Go to Daniel 12 and 1. Read. And at that time shall Michael stand up, a great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. So now, no more. They're not watching in the heavens as we read before in the book of Enoch in chapter 57 and 1. They're not, they're not watching in the heavens no more. Now it's time to go deal with the fallen angels. Now it's time to bring those angels with the chains that, 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 that we read about in Enoch. Now we're about to go deal with the angels that's on earth. Because in order, it, it, it is not, and mankind can't deal with what's coming. It's going, to have to, it's going to have to be the holy angels that's coming from heaven that's going to have to come and deal with that. Make sense? Yeah. Let's go. Read. And at that time shall Michael stand up a great prince with standing for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen there 
was a nation even at the same time and at the time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book written in the book mean they have the mark you read that you can read that in Ezekiel 9 okay you need the mark you need the mark period alright let's keep going let's go to um, now I'm going to show you that the removal you alright yeah. okay the removal is Judah these are the ones who listen these are the ones who been the pilgrims upon the earth I'm going to prove it because in order not to have to know in order not to partake of what was happening by the fallen angels that, that was in Revelation 9 that they went and did to into Babylon you couldn't been there you have to remove yourself like he asked you to we read through the signs that he showed that there was that brothers gonna be against brother you know during these times we, we read through the signs and showed you what that that the, the beginning of it but by this time listen I'm going to prove, in fact, that as a portion of Judah, all Judah is not going into the wilderness. And I'm going to prove that there's going to be Israel in the land upon his, his return. The angels are going to be able to remove those, the, the, that portion into the land. Okay? They're, they're now, will those that in, that, that's in the other parts of the, the Americas make it? Absolutely, yes. I'm talking about the southern, the southern kingdom. They're going to have to ride upon the, the prophecy of the ten tribes. Because now persecution has taken ten tribes. They, the, the ten tribes got to go, out, go into persecution. And I'm going to show you so as uh, uh, the other parts of the southern kingdom. We're going to prove it. Zechariah 14 and 5. Let's get it out. Now I'm going to show you that there's Israel that's in the land. And we already know at that time there will be Israel in the land because they're there now. I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the Ashkenaz or the Khazars, you know, or Moabs. I'm talking about real Hebrews, the Judeans, okay? And we, we know some that went back in the ben Amin. They went back, uh, back in the 60s. So we know they're there, okay? And also, when Jerusalem was destroyed uh, in 70 A.D., everyone that was, that wasn't taken. There were Hebrews or, Jude, or Judeans that went way out into these small pockets in Eden, and they've been there all this time in these small villages. I have a family member there. Who, who uh, 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 who's there? And, and, and can tell you, can verify that. Okay, so let's let's go to, let's go to Zechariah 14 and 5. Read that out. All right, Zechariah 14 and 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. So he said, listen, he's talking to them. Flee to the mountains as uh, uh, the mountains of Azel. Okay. As Keep the mountains going. of Azel. This is not talking about 70 A.D. I'm going to prove it. Keep going, read. Ye, yeah, ye shall flee like as ye flee. Wait a minute, hold on. This is, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't, don't second guess it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, ye shall flee like as ye flee from before the earthquake in the days of Az 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 Uzziah. Uzziah. Uzziah, king of Judah. Uh-huh. And the Most High thy power shall come, and all the holy beings will come to thee. So now he's talking to those that are in Jerusalem. Because, and be, remember, Jerusalem has to be cleansed. We still got, we still got the uncircumcised living in there now. So he said, hey, I need you to go up out of there. So just go chill in the mountain of Isaiah for... for just for a time. Yeah, I'm telling you. And then the angel's going to bring you back. And I'm going to show you the angel's going to bring them back. And the ones in the wilderness, they're going to come together back into the land. And they're going to fight for it. But, but before that happens, the angels are going to go right before them and destroy those that's in the land. Okay? Now, let's go to Matthew 24 and 27. I want to show you what that lightning is that we talked about. That we read about. Read. As for... For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth from the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, very simple. Now we're going to find out who's that lightning is. Let's go to uh, Baruch 4 and 36. Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. We just read why. Because they flee into the mountains of Isaiah. 
So he said, Jerusalem, meaning Israel, looking towards from the east to see what's coming to you. These are the holy angels. Okay? It says, Cometh thee unto thee from the Most High. Let's go to the ladder of Jacob, 6 and 4. The ladder of Jacob, chapter 6, verse 4. For bitter ones will arise, they will cry out unto the Most High, and, out, and the Most High will hear them. Uh -huh. And accept their plea. And the mighty one will repent because of their sufferings. For the angels and archangels will hurl bolts of lightning. To do what? Will hurl bolts of lightning. This is the rays. Now these are the angels. They're coming to destroy the fallen angels. They're coming to subdue them. Keep going. Before them for the sake of the salvation of your tribe. Woo! Let's get it. And you will gain the mercy of the Most High. Matthew 24 and 31. And ye shall send angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Read. Really? From one end of heaven to the other. Alright. You see that. Very clear. Okay. We we'll go to Apocalypse. We're in the pseudepigrapher. The Apocalypse of Elijah, chapter 5 and verse 2. Read. Really? On that day, the Christ will pity those who are his own, and he will send from heaven his 64,000 angels, each of whom has six wings. The sound will move heaven and earth mm -hmm. when they give praise and glory. Read. Now those upon whom the forehead of the name of Christ is written. Whoa, that's how you know who's been marked. Now we're going to know, eh? we're we going to know if his name is Yeshia, your Yehoshua, or whatever. Because he's going to, his name is going to be identified to us. He's going to let us know his name. Keep going, read. Now those upon whose forehead the name of Christ is written, and upon whose hand is the seal, both the small and the great will be taken up upon their wings read. and lifted up before his wrath. Then Gabriel and Uriel will become a pillar of light leading them into the Holy Land. It will be granted to them to eat from the tree of life. Mm. They will wear white garments and the angels will watch over them. They will not thirst nor the son of lawlessness be able to prevail over them. Now, before his wrath, his wrath, not the angels, the fallen angels, before his wrath, they're going to be taken because it's not over. We just read what was going on before the return of the Messiah when all the other nations and everybody came to subdue him. But before his wrath, now there's a removal to the wilderness. Let's find out who will be removed into the wilderness. Will it be all 12 tribes at one time or will it be partial or will it be Ephraim? Who, who will it be? We're going to go and show you who's going to be removed first into the, uh, into the wilderness, according to the precepts. And anyone, you know what I mean, who, who, who want to understand, you don't have to use my teaching. All you got to do is take, take the second as the 13 and break it down. Simple as that. Break it down. All right. Now, again, I'm going to show you that the 10 tribes is... The remnant that will make war. But we're going to keep going. Let's go to Romans 11 and 25. Let's go to the New Testament. I hate saying that word. But let's go to the book. Romans 11 and 25. Let's get that. For I would not, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. So hold on. He said, don't be, he's, he said, listen, this is Paul. Don't be ignorant of this mystery I'm about to drop on you. Okay? Keep going. Read. Of this ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. The blindness in part is happened to Israel. The what? The blindness in part has happened to Israel. The blindness in part that has happened into Israel. Keep going. Now we're talking about the ten tribes. I'm approving right here. Keep going. Read. Until the fullness of the Gentiles. Become now, uh, to the fullness of the Gentiles. You can go into Revelation 11 and get more on that. 
unto the fullness of the Gentiles. Oh, oh Luke, with it. Luke 21 and, and 20 talks to the fullness of the Gentiles. But by this time, it's a done deal. Now the fullness has come. Keep going, read. And so all Israel shall be saved. So he said, all Israel shall be saved. Keep going. As it is written. But go ahead. There shall come out of Zion. There shall come out of who? Out of Zion. Zion, meaning the southern tribe. Read. The deliverer. The deliverer. Keep going. And shall turn away the ungodliness from Jacob. Meaning all. Keep, keep going. Read. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. All right. So now we've seen there's a separation. Okay, there's a separation. He said, yeah, all Israel shall be saved, but this shall come out of Zion. This shall come out of Zion, the deliverer. Okay, so let's find out what's the beacon, what's, what's the, the, that deliverer. Let's go to Revelation 12 and 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman that brought forth the man child. Now, stop right there. Before I want to tell you, I'm just going to blatantly tell you. Portion of, of, of the southern kingdom, or the southern kingdom is going into Israel, and then we're going to, I mean, going to the wilderness, and then going to Israel first. I want to show it to you. Then you have the ten tribes, and then you have the other southern, the portion of the southern kingdom that's not, will, will not be going into the wilderness. I'm about to prove it. Let's go. Start over. It's Revelation 12 and 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman that brought forth, forth the man child. Read. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, and she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times, and a half a time from the face of the serpent. So now he says, he took the woman, which is Israel, okay, I will show you that when I say Israel, I mean the whole, but I'm saying that out of that, that, that the Israelite, I'm telling you that it's going to be the southern tribe of Judah. And it's going to be a portion of the southern tribe of Judah. It's not going to be all. And when I say all, I'm saying this, this because some brothers and sisters of, of Israel uh, uh, are not going at this particular time. They're going to go at another time, but not now. Okay? Keep going, read. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So, the, so, so that portion of that woman that was taken, right, the dragon tried to destroy him. But what happened? And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. So this is the, the, that they were safe in the wilderness. Keep going. And swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now we're talking about the draconian bloodline. Keep going, read. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. So the dragon was wroth with those of Israel that was carried away into the wilderness. What did he do? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Wait a minute, the what? The remnant of her seed. That means the remnant means the rest of the Israelites. He went to make war the ones that didn't get taken away into the wilderness. That's clear. Did you see that? Yes. Keep going. Which kept the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of the Shire Christ. Wow. So hold up. Everyone that are commandment keepers and keeping the law and the testimony of the Messiah did not go into the wilderness. That's clear. And I'm saying this because I firmly believe that there were some who went because they, they lived by the faith and they removed themselves out of certain places of the earth that the Father said to them. Okay? They did it. It takes a lot of faith. And there were others who didn't. But they were commandment keepers. They were law keepers. They believed in the Messiah. But they had to stay, had to wait. And I'm sure that this is the ten tribes, and this is other parts of Judah, meaning the southern tribes. Okay? And this is going to answer a lot of people's questions about when they say, well, the north and the south came together of Israel. Yes, that's true. And this is why. Because what part was removed in the wilderness? What portion of, of the southern kingdom was removed? And the other was what? And then the ten tribes wasn't even removed at all. It's not their, it's not their time yet. But they will have portions 
of the southern kingdom, you know, like if a brother was married to an a, a, a Ephraimite and they had children, then of course, you know, their family or whatever, they're going to be there. Those who, 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 who's removed. Okay? This is not me. I'm going through the precepts. Anybody is welcome to break second Genesis and 13 down. This is the only chapter that gives you detail how, with the priestess, how the father's going to remove them. That's why I read the first scriptures when he said, you will not know it. That was a question. Like, you will not know it? You don't know? Yes, you're going to know. If you read and understand the precepts, you will know. Okay? Let's keep going. Even prove that more. We're going to uh, 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 the Assumption of Moses, chapter 6 and 5. Read that. Then God will remember them because of the covenant. So the fathers will remember them because of the covenant. Okay? Keep going, read. Let's find out these were the ones who were taking the woman that was that the earth helped or the ones the work didn't help. Keep going, read. Which he made with their fathers and will show forth his mercy also in those times. And he will put it into the mind of the king to have pity on them read. and he shall send them back in their own land and country keep going then shall some of the tribes then what read it again clear then what then shall some of then some part of the tribes go up and come to the place appointed for them read so there's going to be some of Israel go to a place that's appointed for them showing you that's going to be the, 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 the wilderness and the land keep going read then shall some part of the tribe go up and come to the place appointed for them, and shall entrance and shall entrench the place anew. I mean, they're going to be there anew. Keep going, read. And the two tribes shall remain in faith laid down for them. Wait a minute, and what? And, and the two tribes uh -huh. shall remain in faith laid down for them. Come on. Sad and groaning because they cannot offer sacrifice to the Most High, their power of their fathers. Uh-huh. What, now, what else going to happen? And then the ten tribes shall increase and spread among the Gentiles in the time of their tribulation. Wow. We just read that. Is, is, is that what we just read in Revelation 12? Yeah. It's the same thing. It's more detail. It's, it, absolutely. It's, it's, much, it's way much more detail. So everyone is not going into the wilderness. It's only a portion. And I'm telling you, that according to the precepts of the scriptures, that portion is going to be parts of Judah, and there's going to be some Ephraim that's from, uh, 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 from uh, Assyria and Egypt. Okay? Now, again, you can go through this yourself. I, and, I, I, and listen, I don't know everything, but... If you can point something out and show me where we're wrong, then hey, I, I'm not, I accept it, no problem. If I can see it is wrong, and we can sit down and they can show me, and then and there was, it was a misunderstanding on my part, not a problem. Okay? But for what was given to me through the precepts of the scriptures, it is what it is. This is what it is. This is exactly what the scripture said. I haven't changed anything. I haven't said anything different that was been placed upon me by the Father through the scriptures. Alright, let's go to Isaiah 35. Let's go on about the wilderness for a second. Isaiah 35, verse 1. Read. The wilderness and the solitary place, solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice in the blossom as a rose. It, sh it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Most High. Read. And the excellency of our power, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Read. Then shall the lame man leap as an, as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and the streams in the desert. Read. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land shall spring springs of waters. And the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. So all those draconians that was dead too, and died, <laughs> they just going to be their dead. This is going to be grass growing around. 
<laughs> Let's go to Psalm 74 and 1. Is this clear? Is it coming yeah. out clear? Yeah. Psalm 74 and 14. Read. Thou breakest the heads of the Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Wilderness will be full with, with uh, meat for, to the, to the, to the uh, from children. Leviathan. From Leviathan. Whoa. Let's keep going. I'm just going to pieces. Zechariah 12 and 10. Let's go read. And I will pour upon the house of David. Now we're going to find out when I say it was Zion, I mean Judah. And Judah, he's that one he's going to put there first in the land. Let's go. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplication. So when it says the inhabitants of Jerusalem, you bet your, your, your butt is going to be some other people there from other nations. Okay? And, I, and, I, and, and also the other tribes. That's what the inhabitants of Jerusalem is. Okay? This is the, the, the sowing in of, of Israel. Keep going, read. The spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So now people say, well, hold up. It wasn't us that, that pierced. That was the Romans. That was the Romans that pierced. I'm going to show you that it was Judah. I'm going to show you that this is talking about Judah. Because I already said the house of David. So we know we're talking about the southern tribe. The southern kingdom. Go to Matthew 27. Is that Matthew 27? Malachi? No, no, no. Matthew. Matthew 27. 23 and 25. I'm going to show you that it was Judah. The southern kingdom that did this. It wasn't the Romans. Matthew 27, 23 and 25. <clears throat> Only the way the Romans did it because we allowed them to do it. But it was us who did it. Matthew 27, Three. 23, All right. and to 25. Read. And the governor said, Why, what evil has he done? What evil has this man done? Keep going. But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Let who? Let him be crucified. Who is him crying out? This is the southern kingdom. Not all, not everybody killed, not all the, the, the Hebrews of the southern kingdom wanted Christ dead. It was only a portion of them. But keep going, read. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Mm -hmm. See ye to it. So go ahead and do it. It's, I'm, I'm innocent. Go ahead and read. Then answer all the people and said, His blood be upon us. Wait a minute. They said what? Then answer all the people and said, His blood be upon us. His blood be upon us. And what? And who else? And our children. Who is the children? Isn't that us? Yeah. <laughs> now, now you're wondering, now you have your answer why the so-called Negroes in America got it the worst. That's why we had the worst slavery. That's how we had the worst because it was on us. That our forefathers put that curse on us, an extra side of curse. Alright, now let's go to Malachi 3 and 2. We're almost there, people. Malachi 3 and 2. Now, the Levites will be gathered and uh, they will be gathered separately. Now we've seen a portion of Judah and that's been gathered. Now we'll be in the Holy Land upon the Christ's re return. But there's going to be a, a, a portion of there will be a portion of Judah that will be uh, delivered themselves. I mean the portion of the Levites that will be delivered themselves. The Levites have a deliverance themselves. Alright? Let's go. And that's why sometimes you see in the scripture it says Nine, the nine tribes. Sometimes you may see nine and a half tribes. And sometimes you may see ten tribes. Okay? But I'm going to show you that the, the portion or that, that the deliverance of the Levites. Malachi 3 and 2. For who may abide that day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like the refiner, is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. So, so. Mm -hmm. and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi he shall what? 
And he shall purify the sons of Levi. The reason he's purifying the sons of Levi because there will be it was the the, the children of uh, of Judah what we just read in the, in the in the testament of Moses was it Moses assumption of Moses that yes, they weren't able to they wasn't able to sacrifice. Yeah, it wasn't able to sacrifice because they was mournful. We can't do this. Ain't no Levites amongst us. That's showing that's only going to be two. So now the Levites have to be taken separately. And then they got to go through the, 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 the fire of baptism within their own tribes. And then for they can be present a sacrifice for the, for the other tribes. Let's keep going. Those, or those that are in the wilderness. Let's keep going. Read. And purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Most High an offering in righteousness. Keep going. Then who? Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Most High, as in the days of old, as in former years. <laughs> now, let, this is a question I want to ask. Why wouldn't we want to be the first ones there? Because now it is a pure fact, as Scripture says, that there's going to be part of, of the tribes of Judah that won't be in the world in this come. But they're going to be commandment keepers. They're going to be law keepers. And I'm, t and, and, and I'm, I'm really believing because they did not take heed and, and come out of the of, of, of fair Babylon. Okay, this this is my this is my my own thinking, and I might be wrong. I might be totally wrong. But what I'm saying is this: Why take a chance? Because it seems like there's a portion of of Judah that the father has favored favored and brought into a certain place first. While the other ones got to go and get it. Even though they're commandment keepers, it's like, you know, I, you know, I, I can understand that, but this is why the Father's doing it. And it's not for me, it's probably not for, neither are understanding, but it's, it's the Father has set this in place. Right? He has set this in place. So why would we want to, to separate ourselves from that place and, and remove ourselves to, maybe it don't have to be, most definitely not Egypt, it don't have to be the Far East. There's places that are welcoming us to come back. It could be the Isles. It could be the islands of the East. But the Father is, is, is asking us to, to separate ourselves from that place. It's for a reason. And this could be very little reason because these, these, these people who, 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 who are entering into the land first wasn't, kept the commandments, but maybe they did something more different. Than, than the others who was commandments keepers that we read in Revelation 12. There's a reason, family. There's a reason, people, and we must follow. Let's go to Isaiah 48 and 9. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise, I will refrain. For I will refrain for day. The keep going. The, that I cut. Thee not all. So I'm not gonna cut you off. Keep going. Behold, I refrain. I refine. Refine thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Okay, so that's just telling you that you have to go through the baptism of fire anyway, whoever it is. Psalms 97 and 8. Zion heard. Who heard? Zion T heard. Talking about the southern kingdom. Read. And was glad. And the daughters of Judah. And who? And the daughters of Judah. So Zion, he's talking about Judah. Keep going. And the daughters of Judah rejoice because of thy judgments, O Most High. They, was, they rejoice because they found a listen. We made it over here in the land. We we okay. We 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 over here in the wilderness. Okay? They 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 rejoice. That's stuff to rejoice. I want to be a part of that. We all should want to be a part of that first, that first taking. Remember, he said he's going to do something new. He's going to do a new thing. Okay? Keep going. Zechariah 2 and 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Most High. Read. And many nations shall be joined to the Most High in that day. Read. And shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Most High of hosts has sent me unto thee. Read. And the Most High shall inherit Judah. He should do what? Inherit Judah. He should inherit Judah. 
his portion his in what? the Holy Land. Wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. That's very clear. The Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion of Judah. <laughs> you see that? That's very clear. I'm going to get more on that. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the Holy Land. Come on, come on. And shall choose Jerusalem again. So he said he's going to inherit Jerusalem, his portion, and shall, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Uh, okay. Let's go. Let's keep going. Let's go to the next. What's that? What's the next scripture? All right. Second Ezra is 13 and 32. Second Ezra is 13 and 32. Read. And the time shall be when these... Wait a minute, hold up. If, if he's saying his portion, Judah, and he, he's, he's talking about a peace, and I'm showing you that he's talking about he's got to save Judah first. He's got to get Judah out of there first. Okay? This is Zion. He's got to get out of Zion first. And this is even more proof that he's asking us to leave out of, out, out of the, 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 the Babylon. He's asking us to leave out of there. But keep going. Go ahead. And the time shall be when these... <laughs> And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. Then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending, and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. Keep now, that's Christ in the Old Testament. That's absolutely. That's that's him in the Old Testament all day. Now hold up. <laughs> now they say he, they're going to come and fight him. So what are you going to do when they come again to, 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 to? Now when the nations come to fight him, he's going to defend Jerusalem, but he's not defending Jerusalem against the Gentiles. No. By this time, Israel will be in the land. Oh, I mean, uh, 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 Judah will be in the land. Zion will be in the land. I'm going to prove it. Read 35. As the second Ezra is 13 and 35. But he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion. He shall on, on top of who? Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Keep that in your mind. Keep going. Keep that in your mind. He shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion. Keep going. And what's going to happen? 36. And Zion shall come and shall be showed all it shall, it shall be shown to all men. So oh, Zion is going to come. He's going to stand on top of Mount Zion. I mean, he's going to be there in front of them. He's going to be there like, yeah, like they're going to be the, the, the soldiers and the people behind. And he's going to be there. And then what? And Zion shall what? And, and shall be shown to all men, being prepared and builded like as thou sawest the hill graven without hand. Woo! That's fine. Alright, now let's keep going. Let's find out that, that, that mountain of that Zion is Judah. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 1. Jeremiah chapter 17 and 1. Read. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altar. Meaning that this is the law was in their heart. Keep going, read. While as their children remember their altars, and the grooves be the green trees upon the hill, the high hills, O oh my mountain in the field. Oh my what? O oh my mountain in the field. Let's find out that same mountain he's talking about is Judah. Keep going. O oh my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin. Throughout all thy borders. All right, let's keep going. Let's find this precept. We're going to find out Isaiah 41 and 25. I I have aroused aroused him, one from the north, and he has come from the rate the rising of the sun. Shall he call upon my name, and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, mortar and as a potter. Treadeth clay. Keep going. Who have declared from the beginning that we may know that we may know. See that? Wait a minute. Who has declared yeah. from the beginning that we may yeah. know? Remember we read in the beginning it says, and you shall not know. You shall know. Right, you, you should not know. You should not know. Right, right. It was a question. Now he's telling you you know. <laughs> because of the precepts. 
precept upon precepts, line upon line. This is why this teaching is a little long, because this is how we put this together. Okay? Keep going, read. And before time that we may say, He is right, He is righteous? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. There is one that showeth, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. There is Wait none <laughs> that declareth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there on. is none that heareth your word. <laughs> Come on, read. The first shall say to the, Zion. Wait a minute, hold on. The first shall say to Zion. Now, if you look in the Hebrew, it's going to say the first to Zion. Okay? If you look in the Hebrew, when you go in the Hebrew, not Lashon Kadesh, but you go in the Hebrew, it's going to say the first to Zion. Come on. So read, 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 read it. Read Zion. Go ahead, read hold. Behold, behold them. Wait a minute. The first to Zion. Behold. Behold them. them. Come on. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. So I'm showing you that Zion, when it says, come out of her Zion, deliver that stuff, Zion. When he's been talking, he was talking to the southern kingdom. These are the ones, I guarantee you, I don't want to say I guarantee you, but I, these are the ones that looks like, I mean, you choose a better word, that looks like will be in the land first. Zechariah 12 and 7. Come on, the Most High also shall save the tents of Judah first. Come on, let's get it. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Now, we were taught that this is talking about Israel. We're going to leave America because Israel is going to destroy America. And that's going to be too abundant for the Judean tribes. So we have to leave first. That's not what it's saying. This is saying before we even get into the land, but once we're there, you know what I'm saying, we got to destroy those people that's in the borders of the land. These flies is off the hook. We, we got to destroy because they were, they were they're there. Moab, all the other nations that's calling themselves Israelis are living amongst our land. And they're in the borders. And I'm going to prove it. Lebanon, all throughout from Lebanon, that's our land. All the way down. Okay, the Moabites that's in Gaza. Moab, I'm sorry, that's in uh, 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 Gaza, calling themselves Palestinian. All those people are magnified themselves. And we, we cannot live amongst them because we, they are not the people. So the angel's going to go hard body on them. We're going to come right behind them. And the scripture says that. So let's keep going. Let's go to Zephaniah 2 7. It says, because inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. They cannot magnify. He got to save us first. Let's keep going. Let's get more on that. Zephaniah 2 and 7. <clears throat> Zephaniah 2 and 7. And the coast shall be for a portion of the house of Judah. Wait a minute. Hold up. This says for what? And the coast shall be for a portion. No. All of Judah. Of the house of Judah. It says all of Judah or for what? <laughs> of a portion of the house of Judah. Of a portion. You can go into Hebrew. And it's going to tell you it's for a portion. It's going to give you the word for portion. Okay? If I say, hey, let me get a portion of oh, your, oh, your, mashed your mashed potatoes. You're not going to hand me all of them. You're going to take your, you're going to take your plate and, a, and, and, and your spoon, not my spoon, and you're going to give me some of it. That's a portion. Keep going, read. They... Oh, they shall feed thereupon in the house of Ascalon. Uh huh. Shall they lie down in the evening? For the most high their power shall visit them and turn away their captivity. You see that? Keep going. That's the ones who we read about in Assumption of Moses. Those are what we read about in Revelation 12. He turned away a portion of Judah. But the other ones was who kept the commandments. They kept the commandments and, and, and everything. But guess what? He allowed the beast to come to deal with them all. That's who the beast was to make war with. Because he couldn't deal with the portion that the Most High took. Make sense? Yeah. Let's keep going. Read. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon. Mm-hmm. Whereby they have approached my people and magnified themselves they did against what? their border. They did what? Magnified themselves against their border. They magnified. That's why it says he has to save the tents of Judah first 
for the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Oh my goodness. I don't want to classify this boy is off the meter. Alright, those who've been out here in Egypt know how these flies get down. They are atrocious, man. They, they don't give up, man. They like, they worship the people. Alright, let's keep going. Read, 2 and 9. Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High of hosts, the power of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah. Read. Even the, bre the breeding of nestles and salt pits and perpetual desolation, the residue of my people shall spoil them. Uh huh. And the remnant of my people shall possess them. You see that? The, he said, the residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. So that's two different things. That's showing there's two different gatherings. Keep going, read. This shall they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Most High of hosts. Read. And the Most High will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and man shall worship him, everyone from his place, from his place, even all the owls of the heathen. All right, let's go back to 2 Nehemiah 13 and 37. We're almost finished. And this my son shall rebuke the wicked. Now, when, when it says rebuke, it says inventions, wicked inventions, but... We're talking about the UFOs that they're going to be using. Okay. The wicked of those nations which for their wicked life are falling into tempest. I mean the temptation, read. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame and shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto me. I mean, that's the law. Keep going. Let's go to uh, Zechariah 14 and 14. Will Judah fight for Jerusalem? I think I proved that. Absolutely yes. Zechariah 14 and 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, <laughs> and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Keep going. Zechariah 12 and 4. Let's go, I. Right. And that day shall the Most High, said the Most High, I will smite every house with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah, and I will smite every horse of the people with blindness. So hold on. You would think he's talking about uh, 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 destroying Judah. He's not. Go to 2nd as the 17. I don't got it right here. Go to right here. Go to right here. Second Ezra, I mean, I'm sorry, go to uh, Second Kings 17. He says he will open his eyes. Now, someone who, who can't understand it, when he says, I will open my eyes and open up the, and upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people, he's not talking about Judah. I'm going to show you when he says he's opened his eyes. Second Kings and 17. Oh, you can go right here, bro. Second Kings seventeen. Second Kings seventeen. Second Kings seventeen. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what seventeen and eighteen. All right. Then the Most High was increased at Israel. And wait. Seventeen and eighteen. Is this it? Here you go. Then the Most High was incensed at Israel, and he banished them from his presence. Yeah, but we don't. Yeah, but we're gonna. 17, yep, right here, here you go, read it right here, right. 17, 17 and 18, what's the same, you want to read from that? Yeah, you read from it, hold on, just, just so it's clear, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used their and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Most High. So they showed themselves to do evil in the sight of the Most High, meaning his eyes was on the Kigar to provoke him to anger. Uh huh. Therefore, the Most High was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. So he removed them out of his sight. Now he set his eyes on them. See that? All right, that's it. That's good. All right. Zephaniah one and three. So I just wanted to show you 
that when he says open his eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse, he's not talking about destroying Judah. He's talking about giving them uh, 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 power, their salvation. Okay, he's put his eyes back on his on, on, on that portion of Judah. Zephaniah 1 and 3. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling, stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Most High. Skip to verse uh, seven. 7. Read. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Most High. For the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guests. Okay, we will show you the guests of those in the port. Those, those Gentile nations that was there. Zechariah 12 and 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 2 and 4. Let's go. And said unto him, Run, speak to his young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Read. For I say that say for I say the most high will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and I will be glory in the midst of her. Zechariah twelve and one. The burden of the word of the Most High for Israel, said the Most High, which stretched forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within, within him. Read. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about. Read. And when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Right, come on, those other nations, keep going, read. And in the day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, and the burden and that burden themselves. All that burden themselves. With it shall what? With, with it shall be cut in pieces through the Zechariah ten and three. My anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats, for the most high of hosts have visited his flock, the house of Judah. Come on. And have made them as his godly horse, goodly horse, goodly horse in the battle. Come on. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be a mighty man as mighty man which treadeth down their enemies in the mire of the in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight because of the most high is with them, and the riders on the horses shall be confounded. Zechariah fourteen and ten. All the land shall be turned as a plain for Gibba and Rehamon. South uh, of Jerusalem. Now I'm going to show you that in, in, in Gideon, there's going to be so much of Benjamites that came back to the land, and uh, 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 and Ephraim and the ten tribes. Once they come, uh, uh, with, uh, which is not yet, but at this point, there's going to be so many Benjamites, and then Ephraim is going to be put in the wilderness after Judah is already in the land. Once Ephraim goes to the wilderness, then they're going to come into the land and join Judah. And then later on, you're going to see that uh, uh, the Levites and uh, the Gentiles, which the Levites really going to be like the captain of the ship, leading the Gentiles to go get the ten tribes. We're almost done. Let's keep going. Uh, all the land shall be turned as a plain from Gibba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. From Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate. Now, if you know how the land looked, Benjamin was next to Judah land. Keep going. Unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananel, unto the king's wine press. And man shall dwell in it, and there be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be a safely inhabited. And well, this shall be a plague wherewith. The Most High will smite all people that have sought 
that are fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Sound like nuclear. That's the fire we saw him coming out of his mouth when he defended Jerusalem. Zechariah 12 and 8. In that day shall the Most High defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them. I mean those who are weak among them. Come on. At that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as the Most High, as the angel of the Most High before see, them. See, and they're showing you that the southern kingdom is going to be there. You see that? Yeah. This is the house of David, Judah, that portion. Okay? Amos 9 and 11. Come on, let's get it out. And that day will I rise up the tabernacle of David uh -huh. that is fallen. Come on. And close up the, the breaches thereof. So he's going to close up the breaches for now. Keep going to read. And I will rise, rise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So I show you that the other tribes haven't even came yet. When you read the whole scripture. Isaiah 52 and 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Now he's oh. telling us this because now he's going to prepare for Ephraim to come and the ten tribes to come. So he's saying, yo, Judeans, put on your beautiful garments. Your brother's on their way. We're about to, get, we're about to make it happen. We don't took down the nations. We don't took down the martyrs. The multitude, the multitude that was in the land, now it's time for your brothers to come. I don't, I don't set out destruction to eliminate those that was in them who wearied with faith. Now I'm going to bring them back. This is the tenth that's spoken about in Isaiah 6. Okay, and also the southern kingdoms, the, 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 the brothers from the sisters from the southern kingdom who didn't make it in the first time, who didn't come into the wilderness. Who still kept the faith because they always being tested. Keep going. Let's go. On. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captivity, O cap captive daughter of Zion. See that? O captive daughter of Zion. Let's keep going. Oh my goodness. So he's even telling you that the, 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 there's going to be other portion of, of, of the southern kingdom that got to come. Second uh, Ezra 13 and 38. We almost finished. And shall, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they all they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame and shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto me. So now he's talking about the ten tribes where we, we saw that the, that, that the draconian and they had to go make war with. He went to the, the, the others who kept the, the, command, the commandments and the faith of the Messiah. So now this is what this is talking about. Okay? we are going to show some of them lost the faith during that. And we're talking about the southern, some brothers in the southern kingdom. And some of them that gained the faith during these times. Alright? Keep going, read. And where thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Who are they? Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Solomon answered the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters and so came they in another land. Alright, stop right there. Let's go back a little bit to 2 Ezra 13. Let's go up to verse 12. I'm going to show you that these are the same ones that was, that was crying and was sorry and all this. Keep going. Afterwards saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. See that? Keep going. Read. And there came much people unto him whereof some were glad some were sorry, and some of them were bound. Some of them were bound. <laughs> Keep going. And the of and other some brought of them that were offered. This is the sacrifice that were offered. Keep going. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said. All right, let's go back to Second Ezra 13 and 41 now. I just want to go back. 
Come on. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Read. And they, that they may keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river for the Most High then sold signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Come on. For through the country where country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same reason was called Asher. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall say, stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore saw us thou the multitude with peace. Now, we'll show you that that's the same way they're coming back. Okay, keep going. But those that were left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. So all, the, all that thing that was destruction, we saw the angels and everything, those that were left behind from that, that were, didn't make it into the wilderness, these are the ones who are going to be within his borders. I mean, that they are coming to Israel. All right, even with Galilee, with Judah, also the Levites will bring the ten tribes as an offering sacrifice. And some will be Judah. You best believe there will be Judeans on them ships of Tarshish. But they, but, but again, wouldn't you, as a, as, a, as a Judean or southern traveler, wouldn't you rather make it into there first and have to wait to, and come with the ten tribes? All right? Isaiah 60 and 9. We're just about done. A few more, few more chapters. Isaiah 60 and 9. Read. Surely the owls shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Most High thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he hath glorified thee. 50, Isaiah 52 and 11. Keep going. Let's go. If Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her. Now he's talking to the Levites and also he, he's talking to the Gentiles because there's dead bodies there everywhere. So he said don't touch nothing that's unclean because remember there, there's bodies all around at this point. Keep going, read. Midst of, go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Most High. The vessels are the tribes that's coming back. Keep going, read. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight, for the Most High will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. So hold on, he's telling those that the ten tribes and all those in the Judea, hey, don't leave, the Most High's coming to get you. You don't have to leave. You didn't want to leave before. And for the ten tribes, he's telling them, hey, don't leave. I'm going to come before you. I'm going to be, your, I'm going to be there in front of you. All right? Uh, Isaiah 66 and 18. I'm showing you that these are Levites who's going to be on these ships as well, according to the scriptures. Isaiah 68, 66 and 18. I'm sorry. For I, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. His glory is those who have been there, the, the Judeans. Keep going, read. In Israel, keep and going. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape see of this? them. Hold on. Those that escape of them, showing that it's the Levites. Keep going. There you go, right there. Those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarsus. Paul, poor, Paul and Lud to draw the bow. That draw the bow. These are the nations that drew the bow against them. These are the Gentiles. So he's going to send them back to go get. Come on, to go get these ten tribes. Keep going, read. To draw the bow to Tabul and Javan, to the isles afar off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. She going. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Most High out of all nations 
upon horses and in chariots and in leaders. Litters. Litters. And upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem. See that? So they're not even going to the wilderness. You see that? They're going straight to Israel. There's no need for them to go into the wilderness. They've been sacrificed. They've, they've been the 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 the, the, the uh, they, they they've been smitten, and only ones left are the ones who are going to be in this borders. So there's no need that they, they went. As a matter of fact, they went through the baptism of fire during this time. So there's no need for them to go to 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 the the, the uh, wilderness. They're going straight to Israel, straight shot to Israel. Because who's there? Remember, we read that it says, "Oh Zion, Judah, put on your holy garments. Your brothers is coming to you." This is them. He gonna read. As the children of Israel bring it an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Most High. See that? Come on, read. And I will also take of them the priests for Levites, see that? Day of the Most High. <laughs> you see that? It's real clear. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites. Remember that the Levites had to be purified to go wide because they was going to bear the vessel. They was going to bring them. Um, now, are the ships going to Babylon on the north? Absolutely. Let's go. Now, 31.8. Let's keep going. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return hither. They shall come with weeping and with supplication. Wait a minute. Didn't we read that about the ten tribes? Some were sorry. Some were crying. Some were mourning. Yeah. This is them. Keep going. Let's go. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. Come on. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of the waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble for I am the father who's to Israel to? and Ephraim. Is my firstborn. That's who he's talking to. So brothers, you cannot use this scripture here. Anybody. Don't let anybody, nobody ever send me no scriptures. <laughs> I'm saying somebody have, but sending me a scripture for 31 day talking about Judah. It's not talking about Judah. You see that? Yeah. It's talking about Ephraim and the ten tribes. Give me Jeremiah 3 and 18. In those days... The house of Judah now, shall fall. Now! The house of Judah. Come on. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. Now you're getting the other portion of Judah who's coming with the ten tribes. You see that? Now you're getting them to come. The other portion of the southern tribe was already there, and some of the northern tribe. Or, or some of the people who, who were in the northern tribe was there. But the prophecy was for the southern tribe of the Judah to come. Keep going. Alright. Um, they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto their father. They're going straight to Israel. Keep going. Isaiah 11 and 12. And ye shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel. And gather together the dispersed. The what? The dispersed. Meaning the other parts. <laughs> Come on. Of Judah, from the four corners of uh, the earth. Jeremiah 16 and 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Most High, that it shall no more be said, the Most High liveth, that brought up the children out of is out of the land of, of Egypt, but. The most I live of that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whether he have driven them, I will bring them again into the land that I gave unto their fathers. Isaiah 11 and 10. Let's keep going. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the nation seek and his rest shall be glorious. Alright, let's keep going. We, again, some of the people will be Judah. Hosea 1 and 10. We're almost finished. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. 
And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. Keep going. Then shall the children of Judah uh -huh. and the children of Israel uh -huh. be gathered together and appointed, appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. And that would be the Levites who helped them to appoint themselves and give them order. All right, coming back. Let's go to Psalms 97 and 1. The Most High reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad. All below. right, there we go. Let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them that blind and the lame, the woman with the child, and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. A great will, of them. Come on. Will I lead them? Will he lead them? Remember he said, don't go out. I will come before you. He told, remember we read that. Come on, let's get it. I will cause them to walk by the, the rivers of the waters in a straight way, or and they shall be stubble. They shall not stumble. Well, they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Again, he's talking about the ten tribes. Let's go. Come on. 31. Hear, oh, 31 and 10. Hear the word of the Most High, O ye nation. And declare it in the hours of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and he's, keep him. He's talking about the ten tribes. He's not talking about the twelve tribes. Keep going, read. As a shepherd doeth his flock. Read. For the Most High hath redeemed Jacob uh -huh. and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. So they're going to come back, and they're going to be singing when they come back, right in the presence of Zion. Remember, Zion was preparing themselves for the ten tribes that Ephraim will come. Jeremiah 3 and 11. And the most I said unto me, the backsliding Israel hath rejoiced, has justified. justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Come on. Go and proclaim these words towards the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Most High. And I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Most High. Mm -hmm. And I will keep my anger forever. Come on, read. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Most High, for I am married unto you, and I will take you in take you one of a city uh -huh. and two of a family. And we'll do what? And I will bring you to Zion. I'm going to bring you to Zion. I'm going to bring you to your brothers, the southern kingdom. Come on. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. Because once they did, they're, they're going to teach them. They're going to show them. All right? It will come a point where no man is going to have to be taught in the land of Israel. But right now, they're going to show them and give them understanding. Because they're going to be like, well, how do I get are y'all here? Well, listen, this is, what happened. this is what happened. Come on. According to my heart, we shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, uh, some, of, some of Ephraim, they're going to leave uh, 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 the wilderness and they're going to go right to uh, uh, Judah. They're going to go right to Jerusalem with Judah. Okay? And then they're going to go to war after that. All right? But thus... Isaiah 52 and 3. For thus saith the Most High, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Talking about Ephraim. So nobody ever never send me this scripture talking about Judah. Because it's not talking about Judah. It's talking about Ephraim. It's not even talking about the other ten tribes. It's talking about Ephraim. Okay? Keep going to read. For thus saith the Most High, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. All right, see, that shows you that's a different prophecy. That's a prophecy only regarding uh, uh, Ephraim. Isaiah 11:11. 11, 11. Let's get it. Let's keep going, bro. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people 
which shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. Come on. and from Egypt and from Patros, Come on. Nubia, Nubia, and from Cush, Come on. and from Elam, and from Sinar, Elam is Babylon, and Iraq. from Hamid, Come on. and from the Isles of the Sea. Right. Islands of the sea. Y'all see that? It's very clear. I'm sorry, Elam, uh, I'm Shinar is from Babylon. Elam, I believe, is, uh, no, I think it's Syria. Syria? Yeah, I think it's a uh, place in Syria. I'm not for sure. I forgot. All right, but l let's keep going. Um, Zechariah 10 and 11. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction and shall smite the waves in the sea. Talking about the ten tribes on their back. Come on, let's keep going. And all the deeps of the river shall dry up, and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down. Come on. And the scepter skep, of Egypt shall depart away, and, and I will strengthen them in the Most High. And they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Most High. Talking about Ephraim again. These are prophecies. Okay, so brothers, if you're in Egypt, okay, that, that you in Egypt, you better know why you're in Egypt. Because you, you're not in Egypt because it's the, 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 the collection is coming from Judah in Egypt. So anybody told you that, that was a lie. If you're in Egypt, you know what I'm saying, you got to, first of all, you, you, if you're Judah, I wouldn't stay in Egypt too long. I will, I, will be, I will make moves. Because that prophecy doesn't concern you. Not saying that it, will, it won't be Eth Judeans that will be gathered with Ephraim. I'm just saying that that prophecy is, is concerning Ephraim. Okay? Uh, um, um, and, and we should be pilgrims upon the earth. We should be making moves. Because you, you understand what I'm saying? It's real clear. Alright? I'm not the one to say you can't be in, 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 uh, in Egypt. But what I'm saying is just to be on the same side. That prophecy is for Ephraimites. Okay? And there will be a removal after it's smitten in Egypt. That's when it's going to be removed. That's when it's, and what we read in Assyria about the angels coming, the, uh, the fallen angels coming to Assyria. They're going to do damage. They're going to be chasing. It's going to be oppression because these people that are, lit, are, that are in Egypt and Assyria are hard body. Muslims, and it's going to take them to get smitten, the, the, Ephraim, the Ephraimites to get smitten to, to, to say, you know, hey, we forget all our Islam mess. I'm with the Most High. I'm with the, 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 the powers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what the Father wants. He wants submission, and he will get it. Let's keep going. Are we almost finished? Uh, Isaiah 11 and 15. And the Most High shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Now, that was the imprint. When you look into the, 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 uh, 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 the, the Hebrew, it's not going to say Egyptian sea. It's going to say the Euphrates. It's going to say the Euphrates. But keep going. And that was, that was the imprint. That was to throw you off. That was to throw all of us off. You can look in there and the Hebrew is going to tell you, you, it's going to tell you the Euphrates. Keep going. And you're looking right now the Euphrates is dried up. You can go and Google Euphrates River is dried up, up. And it's already there. So that so there is, it shouldn't say Egyptian Sea. That was something they put in there. Okay? And this and you can see that in your in your Tanakh. That's why I say it's a better version than than, than the uh, the KJV, but there's still some things you gotta go and look and go into the Hebrew yourself. Because they're twisting it. Keep going, read. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. <coughs> And shall smite it with seven streams, and seven streams, and the seven streams, and make men go over dry sod, and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, mm -hmm. like as it was to Israel in the day he came up out of the land of Egypt. That's after that again. That's after those angels that went hard body. Remember, it says that that that, that Syria will be smite with man. Remember, we read that. It's with the hand of man, by man but by uh, non-humans right non-humans Isaiah 35 and 8 and a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but shall be for those that wayfaring man though fools shall be not error therein Should error come on no lie error therein no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up therein. 
it shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Come on. And the ransom of the Most High shall return and come to Zion uh -huh. with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. So you see, again, they're going right into Israel. Okay, this is Ephraim. Ephraim was going, there's a, there's a portion of Ephraim going to go in the wilderness, a portion of Ephraim will go straight to Israel. See, once Judah, once Judah there, there's really no need for the, for the wilderness. Because it's already been laid. There's already been, they already went through the, the baptism of fire. They've always been smitten. Those who are left are going to be the ones behind his borders. Alright? Isaiah uh, 48. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it, for a pastor shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that have mercy on them shall lead them. For even by the springs of the water shall he guide them. It's coming back. This is Israel. The ten tribes coming back. Keep going. And I will make all my mountains a way and my highway shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. All right, the land of Sinem. Very clear, very clear. All right, uh, Zechariah 10 and 6. Now, let's talk about, this talks about Benjamin and uh, Ephraim and Galeed. Read. And I will strengthen the house of Judah. And there's going to be so much of a, Ephraim and, and the ten tribes of the land, we're going to be spilling over the borders. That's how many it's going to be. It's going, it's, the remnant is still going to be millions. Keep going. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph. And I will bring them again to the place again to place them for I have mercy upon them and they shall be as though I had not cast them off for I am the most high of their power and I will hear them and they of Ephraim mm -hmm. shall be like a mighty man and their hearts shall rejoice as though as, as through wine yeah their children shall see it and be glad their hearts shall rejoice in the most high Come on. I will hence for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them. And they shall increase as they have increased, and I will sow them among the people. And they shall remember me in far countries. See that? He will sow them among the people. Come on. And they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Galilee and Lebanon, and place a and place shall not be found for them. Very good. Uh, let's go. Micah two and twelve. I will surely assemble, O Jacob. Talking about the twelve tribes. Come on. All of thee, I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. See that? Read. I will put them together as a sheep of Basra. Bozra. Bozra. As the flock in the midst of the, their, their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of multitude of men. Now, if you see, if you look at Micah 2 and 12, he called Jacob, but he was, when he says Jacob, he was talking about Judah. And it is all of thee, and I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. So he's talking about the Israel. I will put them together. You see that? Keep going. The breaker is come up before them. They have broken up, and I have passed through the gate, and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them, and the Most High on the head of them. All right. We're almost done. A few more scriptures, bro. We're almost there. Micah 7 and 14. Feed thy people with the rod, the flock of thy heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel. So by this time, we it's so many of us that's in the Holy Land. It's too many of us. We spell it, we're going to be spelling over, over borders. Keep going, read. Let me feed in the sun and Galilee 
as in the days of old, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I so show so unto him marvelous things. All right, he's going to perform marvelous things. Amos 9 to 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Most High. So once we're there, we're going we're gonna to be building. And also the Gentiles are going to come, and they're going to build our land up for us as well. Zephaniah 2 and 4. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ascalon a desolation. They shall drive out Asdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Chehiritites. The word of the Most High is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. Come on. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant, and the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds, and the folds for the flocks. Come on. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. See that, and it shows you that there's that portion. Now this should have been we should have preached up this long time ago. Up, oh, but it, just to show you that this scripture right here talks about the destruction of Jerusalem by the angels. And also that the, we know that the children of uh, Judah, the portion of Judah, and the, and, the, and, the, and the inhabitants that's with them are going to come in and destroy that land. And it's only for the portion of Judah, the Judah that he's doing this for at this particular time. Come on. It shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Uh huh. They shall feed thereupon in the houses of Ascalon, shall they lie down in the evening. For the Most High, their power shall visit them and turn away their captivity. Isaiah 11 and 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Come on, read. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon, they shall obey so them. So once we're together, now we're going to go and, and deal with Edom. Esau's got to be dealt with. Okay? Amos 9 and 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, See says that? the Most High that doeth this. Come on. Behold, the days come, saith the Most High, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sowed the seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. So they got to get dealt with. Okay? And then we're going to possess all those who's called by his name. They're going to keep the statutes, commandments, and laws. Just back up just a little bit. Put on. There you go. Obadiah 1 and 17, read. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Talking about all twelve tribes at this point, come on. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. Come on. And the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. There will be none of them left. But, but few. But those who are called by his name. Come on. For the, for the Lord has, for the most I have spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. Mm -hmm. Come on. And they of the plain of the Philistines. And they shall possess the fields of Ephraim. Come on. And the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess the lead. Come on. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. So let you know the Canaanites still are here. Jeremiah 16 and 19. O oh, Most High, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. 
the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say surely our fathers have inherited lies vanity and things when there is no profit alright so let them know that these again that the Levites will be ahead on these ships to Tarshish guiding the Gentiles Ezekiel 37 and 22 once we're there the land will be glorious and we will blossom within that land Ezekiel 37 and 22 read and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into the kings anymore into, into at all two kingdoms into two kingdoms anymore at all. Alright, Isaiah 4 and 1. What's going to happen now? Now what's going to happen at that time? Read. Go ahead, read. And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Because by this time, there have been so many men that has died, that were killed. There's still going to be more women than men. Okay? By this time. Come on, finish that off. We're almost done. We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us call, be called by thy name and take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Most High be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Come on. It shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion that he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Shall be called what? Holy. Holy. Come on, read. Even everyone that is written among in the in the in the living in Jerusalem. When the Most High shall have wasted washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning and the Most High will pray upon every dwelling place of, of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a trip a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for Covered. Covered from the storm and from rain. Zechariah 14 and 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from the year to worship the king. The most I oppose to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king the most high of hosts even upon them shall be no rain so that's letting you know there's going to be people still living on the earth in different places at this time keep going not in the western hemisphere though that's done with keep going it's going to go back to the days of old and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain there shall be a plague wherewith the most high will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Alright, last scripture. Isaiah 60 and 10. Read. And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that man may bring unto the forces of the nations, and that their kings might be brought. Alright, so, with that, the piggyback, we're going to go right back to 30 and 1 of Deuteronomy, to show you the overall what he was talking about, what that, that, that uh, Moses was talking about. Read that the last time, bro. And it shall come to pass when all these things, this is Deuteronomy 30 and 1, and it shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them in mind among all nations whether the Most High thy power have driven thee. Come on. And thou shalt return unto the Most High thy power, 
and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Come on. Thou, though, and thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then the Most High thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. And I will return and gather thee from all nations. Now you just read how he went and gathered us from all nations. Through all the smitten and everything. Come on. Whether the Most High thy power have scattered thee. And if any of thine be driven out into the most uttermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Most High thy power gather thee. And from thence will he fetch thee. And the Most High thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will be good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Alright, that's the teaching right there to break down the second essence of the 13th. I know it was kind of long, but it was worth it. Well worth it to me. Um, <laughs> we've been through it. I hope you, um, the teaching is going to be in broken up in parts. So, most definitely you're going to have to take your time when you have free time to look at it. Again, and also the website where you can find, um, Take the link and post it in the box. Yeah, the box in and load, man. I don't know why. <laughs> what I'm going to do in the in the um, the teachings, you will be able to see. Uh, if you go into the the yeah, you can you put it up there already. Yeah. Okay. You'll be able to see the uh, uh, the link. It's going to be up. And we just want to thank you guys for, for tuning in. Um, all praises to the Most High, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And with that, um, we like to say shalom. We're looking forward to uh, you joining us again. And uh, blessings, Israel. Shalom. Shalom.